Um, what have I got? Need a bit of loop, Chris. So we started off with, this is a Marsden's. Is it Marsden's? No, cancel that. Is it Marsden? I forget how to say it. Yeah, Marsden. Marsland. That's it, yeah, Marsland, yeah. Well, guys, thanks for watching. Um, we're hoping... No, get rid of that. I hate that fucking um. It all started working on a series in my dad's shed. I'd followed my dreams and joined the Marines, serving in Afghanistan. Defenders were always part of me. So here we are, building custom machines with my awesome team in Shropshire. We are Maker. Hi guys, I'm Dave and welcome to Maker. This is episode 22. Sorry we've been quiet for the last three weeks. I've decided to have an annual holiday. Chris, our videographer, has had a holiday, which we're all entitled to. This is Wombat. Those of you that follow our Instagram and our Facebook, you'll see this machine has been evolving. I cannot get over the hours that's gone into this machine. It's probably the most extensive build that we've done to date. Michael has been super patient, which I'm super grateful for. But here it is, and I wanna say we are 95% finished. We are literally waiting on the last fabrication bits. Since you've seen this last, the cage has gone in, the amplifiers have gone in, the whole sound system's gone in. Take a look in here. So we've given him some blue ambient lighting, lighting up the headline in, the toolbox is in the back, as you can see here. We've lit, lit those up inside there so you can see what you're getting if you were in there at night. The sound system in here is crystal clear. If you look in there, Chris, there's two Alpine amplifiers powering a series of speakers. This car is all about clarity. It's what my class for and it's what we gave him. We've given him Anderson connections here. So he's got a mobile inverter so he can plug his inverter into that and basically power his, I think he's got electric mini diggers, electric quads. This car is literally a rolling power plant. And those of you that followed the previous videos will see down there, we've literally got the ultimate Invictron. So we've got split chargers powering the two lithium batteries. So this car is literally a rolling power plant, if you like. Here we've got an ARB compressor concealed in here. It's basically a flexi line so we can blow tires up. And on his farm, it's super handy. So it gets a flat, tire runs low, you can just pump it up. So super mobile and super versatile, if anything. In here, as you'll see this roll cage, this tubular design was, was ours. Michael gave us a plan of attack to basically, he wanted his child sit here, so he could reach in the back and see to his little one. You know what it's like, little ones always want that bit of attention. You always need to pass them a crisp, pass them a drink. And when you're on the move, you don't be reaching far back in the defender. So we've done exactly what he asked for. And then we've got these beautiful Recaros. These are the classics. And we just love this like velour finish. Hello, Darren is our new team leader here. Hang on a second, what do you mean new team leader? Huh? How do you work that one out? Well, hang on, what's the, what's the awkward bit there? The new or the team leader? Yeah, the new bit, mate. Oh, you've always been the team leader? Yeah. Senior management on my contract. It's going to be tricky. So today, Louis has been literally flat out in here. He's been finishing off here. We've got right off roads, lovely rubber mat system. This system's fantastic, sound deadens. And it's also great. You just get a hose pipe in here, flush the mud out, give it a wipe out, job done. No wet carpets, no damp, no nothing. And the perfect sound deadener. Not that we need it on this really quiet motor. It's super quiet, unless you open the bells, of course. Right, and if you're seeing here, you can see in the entire like, wiring loom. This loom has been an absolute epic job. As you can see here, we've got Ethernet cables that tell the Victron system what to do. We've got wiring that runs the heater in the back. It's just endless. We've got full control systems for the laser lights, front, rear, LED headlights. 
it is just bonkers. But Mace Industries are doing a fantastic job for us on that. And unfortunately, I think them guys have been labeled with a bit of a COVID scheme. And unfortunately, they're gonna to have to isolate. So it's, it's put a massive delay on this build, unfortunately, but we're doing our best to try and get out the door. So under here is literally ticked off. The other week we fitted those valves. The valves basically allow the old fashioned heater in the back, the Clayton heater to work. So one opens and one closes as and when you've got a Rio stat inside the cab. Michael's idea and we love it. It's something retro mixing with a modern truck. But as you can see here, we've covered all these beautiful aluminium parts with crinkle coat. It's what we call it. It's a powder coated substance, but it gives a really nice textured finish and it almost matches these beautiful equipped wing tops. And in there is an LSA Corvette engine. Absolute power plant. All we're waiting for now is the aluminium dash. As soon as we've got that, we're gonna do that in that same crinkle coat, give it that lovely textured finish. We're gonna fit all the RS components, all the switches, and hopefully, We'll get this truck to Michael sooner the better. So if you clicked on the thumbnail, this is what I'm going to talk you through. This is an LS3 430 horsepower Corvette engine into a Defender 90. So this is a Marsland 90 chassis. This chassis is called a crate bolting system. Derek, come here. Come here. Distracting the job, mate. Basically, what we started here was, so this is the Mars. <laughs> so this is the Marsland 90 chassis. We call this chassis the cradle chassis because it's got a lovely welded in plate. It comes galvanized, comes out the box. There is no need to put a welder or a grinder or any cutting method towards this chassis in order to give you an LS3. In here, we've got a series of counter holes. These holes are already threaded. So what we did, we made a plate, a six mil plate, and we gave you separate mounts. We can do the BMW, we can do the LS3, and we're also looking at doing the Cummins. Not quite perfected yet, but as you can see here, this is an LS3 fully mounted bolting system. We sell a cross member and we sell two mounts, a left-hand side and a right-hand side. Totally perfected. If you want this engine, we're happy to come and mount it for you. Bring your chassis or order a chassis from ourselves and we'll mount it. Like Mark's doing here, Mark is gonna finish this himself. So we've charged him for an engine, a gearbox and a transfer case and our mounting service in a chassis. We've fitted his axles, his bulkhead and that's all we require. We can even do it turnkey. So it's on the ignition barrel. We can literally turn the key and you can drive it out of our workshop if you like. So the choice is yours. We offer every service from just mounting to basically however you really want it. So get in touch. Take a look at how we fitted this LS3 into this 90. Why do we need to put your staff on? I just want them to sponsor me. Need a new box. It's been a few months.
Yeah. 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 So we jig mount every LS3. We don't just couple the mounts up and make them. This is our jig. These are our mounts. So basically this cross member here, we're using GKN's actual center cross member parts here. Good friend of ours, Carl supplies those to us. These are our end plates. These end plates pick up, those of you that are familiar to Land Rovers, these are the mounts that pick up on your R380, your LT77. Every chassis has these in, be it a 300 TDI, a 200 TDI, anything. So from an older chassis, from a TD5 to a Puma. So they've all got them there. So this is basically, we can turn any chassis out there into a cradle chassis with our kit. As you can see here, this is, this is actually an LT4 with a six speed sequential box. So if you look under here, you'll actually see this is the kit installed. So we've made loads of room for exhaust systems. We've laid, made room for prop shafts. There's nothing we haven't thought about with this cradle. So Dirty 130 has had its air system fitted. I contacted Matt Savage. Matt Savage supplies air systems. So a V air air system, I wanted the best in the business. So I contacted Matt, I said, hey Matt, you know my promo truck that we're gonna be taking to all the shows next year? I said, any chance of hooking me up with the ultimate kit? So Matt was super kind and said, Dave, you know what? I'm gonna give you a 2.5 gallon kit. And as you see under there, we've got exactly what I asked for. So we literally ignition on, we flick this switch, and it's actually a nice quiet system as far as things go. As you can see here, I, I didn't want to see this gauge on the dash because Puma gauges can become cluttered as they are. So what we've done is fitted this really neat little gauge here onto the seat box. Little flick of the switch. We can even have this permanently on. Sarah's blowing the tires up or I was off road and wanted to help a friend out. We've got onboard air. If I put it to the back position, we've got ignition live. So that means the compressor is always on as long as the vehicle is on. So you haven't got to worry about things draining. Middle position is off. And for a few extra little gimmicks, we gave it one of these. Just for the ultimate horn factor. That's off a 1980s freight train, and it was just a must have for this big girl. As you'll know, the people that follow this build, we've given it a good 400 horsepower, dirty 130, three liter, hybrid turbo, BMW, monstrous engine, runs three bar of boost, and boy, does this thing shift. So we needed axles to match it. So we contacted our friends Tom at Winchester Gears and he gave us these beautiful girls. So we've got ARB lockers, we've got pegged differential cases, and we've also got heavy duty bringing pinions. And then I contacted my friend James at Adrenaline and he gave me these arms. So we've actually extended the wheelbase of this 130 to 134.5 inches, if you wanted to be precise. So we've got an extra one and a half inches on the front because this car's running a six inch lift, we wanted to give it, basically give it its stance back and give it its basic, where the axle used to live originally. So as we've gone up, the axle's got closer to the rear, if that makes sense. So we've pushed the front axle forward and putting it back where it belongs. Red Winches have launched a new product. I call it the butt plug. So this little plug here, very, very neat bit of kit. And I can show you that, just give me a second. Ready? So Neil sent me this nice little gift out. And what I love about it, it saves having a big yellow hook hanging on the front of the car. Well, I don't plan on using this truck in extreme off-road situations, so I'm not gonna be in the mud every weekend, if you like, but it's there if I need it. So you see here, it gives you this nice little loop. Nice and clean, it's not gonna chip my bumper, it's not gonna rattle around. But this little plug, super handy. You literally grab your rope, slip it over, 
It's a bit fiddly if you've got big fingers like me. So literally plug it over the top like so. Yeah, fast forward that bit. So what we basically do here is we put the winch back in. You've got a nice concealed winch rope that's safe, it's packed up, there's no clacking, there's no vibrating, and it's perfect. Another great product from Red Winches. Officially five o'clock somewhere in the world. So this is a new product for us. This is a Bilstein Advance steering dampener. We contacted Bilstein and we asked them to basically produce a black steering dampener. We didn't like having yellow things hiding underneath our cars, but this dampener has got improved technology. I can't go into full detail because it's giving away their secrets, but trust me, buy one off us and try it. And if it doesn't improve your steering feedback, We'll give you your money back, okay? So we've got these currently on offer. These are 130 pounds plus the VAT. We charge 20 pounds for shipping because it's insured. So give us a shout and we get one in the post to you as soon as possible. Do you know what you're doing? Is he taking the piss? Don't get my name, my dodgy nails on YouTube. I instructed Yasmin to make some wing covers. So we made some in leather, but people turned their nose up because they're a little bit expensive. Because hides have gone up, because I think grass has gone up. I think the price of milk's gone up, so now that's made the dead cow a little bit more expensive. So now we're about to use synthetics of the world. Why do you need wing covers? Because when we work on these cars, as you can see, we're elbow friendly. But what we do, we put a piece of three mil aluminium skinned inside two layers of vinyl to stop this elbow heavy, soft skin vehicle creates dents, and especially when these cars are finished, and we just need to reach in there and do a little task. And nine times out of seven, we see the 19 stone skinny Darren Ike kneeling on these, so we need to reinforce aluminium. And uh, you're in-house seamstress. Yasmin has um, accomplished the, the task. If you come around here and have a look, she's done a bloody good job. They're not finished mm. yet. He wants the Maker logo, embroidering top left here, and the we need like a rivet hole for the aerial here, so that that sits nice, because at the moment the aerial gets in the way, and then they're done. Um, so for those of you that don't know, this is a 2.4 TDCI Defender. I believe this is a 2010, and as you can see, guys, the rot has started to get to this chassis. Our customer, Rich, approached us and said, Dave, can you just blast it and give it a quick wax oil and give it a quick paint? And I was like, I don't like wax oil, and I don't like doing jobs by half. So we took the wings off, and basically, I don't know what to say, really. We looked at it, and we just thought, Jesus, this is a little bit beyond giving it a quick blast and a quick paint because we've got to take the bolt, we've got to basically take the brake lines out, we've got to take the fuel lines out because our blaster is a bit of a powerful beast and it'll destroy everything. So we weighed the job up and we thought, you know what, it's going to be cheaper, it's going to be more cost effective to, to basically put a galvanized chassis. So we've actually ordered another Marsland chassis for this vehicle. It's coming VIN stamped, so and it's going to last rich. It's probably out going to live the truck, to be honest, but he's going to have a perfect basis for his new truck. And basically we're gonna put this lovely body on that is very tidy underneath. It's gonna need a couple of patches tidying up. Probably a nice undercoat in our two coat finish. But other than that, we're gonna give him some nice galvanized bracketry, basically just freshen up this Puma. So don't be afraid guys to get in touch. We're not afraid to put galvanized chassis on Pumas. They're getting older, right? These cars are getting where TD5s used to be. They're not getting any younger. And unfortunately our lovely government uses some fantastic salt that doesn't not only rot let's say ice it's rotting your chassis so either keep on top of them regularly oil them regularly wash them or bring it to us and put a nice galvanized chassis underneath it okay 
Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for commenting. We're going to be doing another question and answers. Everybody loved the last one, so do not be afraid to ask questions, ask how we do things. Make sure you drop a comment below. Fill that gap. Let us know what you want to see, okay? If you want to know anything about this beast, if you want to know anything about my own 130, anything in these shops, do not be afraid to ask me, okay? Anyway, I'm off to the pub, guys. It's been another stressful week. Anyway, what do you reckon, Derek? Steak and tea? Or steak and beer? Anyway, thank you, guys. Mm -hmm.